Very good morning to you from Calvary Center, Jaila. Warm welcome for our Sunday morning service on this, the 31st of October, 2021. We, are, we hope you are tuned in and ready to listen to God's word today as we continue on our series, Peace in the Pandemic. But before we do all that, we need to enter into God's courts with thanksgiving and into his house with praise. So wherever you are, whether it's your living room or wherever you are, join us as our worship team is now ready to take you to the very throne of, in the presence of God in praise and worship. But before we do that, we are going to pray. We're going to ask God's blessing upon this service uh, that God would speak to you and minister to you. Shall we do that? Would you, have, would you join me in closing your eyes and bowing your heads? Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for this awesome privilege that we have as your children, Lord, to praise you, to thank you, Lord, to give you praise. And Father, this morning we, we are excited because you have something very special for each one of us. I pray, O oh Lord, for our worship team as they come to lead us. Lord, we pray for your word. We pray for ourselves that we will be ready to receive what you have for us today. This we ask in Jesus' never-failing name. Amen. Over to our worship team as they come to lead us into the very throne of grace.
for worship this morning. I hope you enjoyed it. However, worship is not for our enjoyment, it's for God. We, when we worship God, we sing and we worship to the one man audience and that is God. And I believe that if our worship went from our hearts in spirit and truth, he would be glorified, he would be happy this morning. But this morning again, we are going to listen to God's word. As you know, we have been doing a series on Psalm 23 and we have gone through four weeks and we have come up to verse 3 of Psalm 23. Today we are going to the fifth in our series of peace in the pandemic. It's called demolish your depression. Demolish your depression. This morning we are so joyful and happy to have Pastor Dishan with us who is going to share on demolishing our depression. I believe that you've been enjoying this series and I have no doubt that God will speak to you this morning. Would you welcome our interim senior pastor, Reverend Dishan Vikram Ratna, the title, Demolishing Your Depression. Calvary Center family, we have come on a great journey by looking at Psalm 23 verse by verse. You know, I'm so thankful to God that we are able to do this, uh, uh, come on this journey or travel on this journey together. You know, I'm also thankful to God that even after all the tough times with uh, the home going of uh, dear Pastor Vernon Pereira, that God gave me the privilege to be with this family. And now you are a part of my life and hopefully I'm part of yours and, and given uh, me new relationships and I've been able to guide you in this short but great season. And I know God has great things planned and I thank God for the privilege of serving you uh, in this capacity. Now today, mainly because of COVID-19, uh, we can see that stress, worry, anxiety, which I call all the cousins of fear, right? They rule our life and our world. Now therefore, a month ago, 
we started a new sermon series here at Calvary Center called Peace in the Pandemic. Peace in the Pandemic. So today we're going to continue and uh, let's ask God's blessing first. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you that, Lord, your word will never change. Your, Lord, that's our foundation. That's our stability. I pray that Dishan would decrease and the Holy Spirit would increase. Lord, speak to us from your word and change us according to it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today we are going to look at Psalm 23, verse 4. Psalm 23, 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Today we're talking about valleys or a valley. You know, a valley is a low area between two hills or mountains, right? The low area is also known as a depression, right? I think that's where the word depression probably came from. Here, it is clear that David is talking about the darkest valleys of life, which we call depression or being depressed. Now, today we will look at how the word of God helps you to demolish your depression. To demolish your depression. Now, there is an old Arab parable that says, All sunshine and no rain storms makes a desert. All sunshine and no rain storms makes a desert. Now, if you never have any down times or lonely times or dark times and gloomy times in your life, I'll tell you, you'll be all dried up. You'll have no depth to yourself, no maturity. You see, it takes good times and bad times to make a mature person. Life is a mixture of pain and pleasure, right? of uh, victory and defeat, of success and failure or of sunshine and storms. You know, that, that's why I have a hard time with this, the prosperity gospel that says, oh, life is about everything going well, you'll never be sick, you'll never have a problem, and, and the richer you become with more wealth, you're more prosperous. I want to tell you, that's a bunch of rubbish. God has put us in this journey to become what God wants us to be so that our eternal prosperity is intact and is there. But you know what? God is making you and making me from the inside. And to do that, sometimes these valleys come into play. You know, this is not heaven, right? We are going there. So today we are going to look at God's remedy for dark valleys in your life. Even in our darkest valleys, our darkest days, God is there. Let's read again Psalm 23, 4. We'll be looking at Psalm 23, 4 many times, okay? Let's look at it. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You know, I want to remind you to, if you have a pen and a paper or a notebook, take some notes. Because every time you just listen, I'll tell you, within... Uh, what, 48 hours, you've forgotten 95% of what you've heard. But if you write and you get engaged uh, in it, you will remember more. And take some notes. God may be speaking to you. And later on, uh, he, he might show you some things that you will need for that moment. The first point I want to bring to you or talk to you about is the nature of valleys. The nature of valleys. So let's look at a few things about valleys, right? A, the first uh, sub point, A, valleys are unavoidable. Valleys are unavoidable. You see, they are going to happen. So you might as well count on it. You see, you have just, some of you may have just come out of a valley. Or maybe you're in a valley right now. Or probably you're headed towards one. You see, valleys happen throughout life one right after another sometimes. After every mountain top, remember, there is a valley. Jesus was very realistic about this. Jesus says in John 16, 33, John 16, 33. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. So you see here, it is not a matter of if, it's you will. Not if you will, no, you will. 
It's going to happen. You're going to have difficulty. You're going to have disappointment and discouragement in life. This is not heaven. This is here. We are here on earth. You see, these things are a normal part of life. So don't be surprised by it. When it happens, oh, surprise. That's why I said I'm worried about the gospel that says, oh, these things happen only if you have sin in your life. No, my friend, that is not true. This is the earth. This is where we live. That's, if this was not going to happen, you wouldn't need 66 books in the Bible. Right? A few pages would have got you to heaven. So don't be surprised. God is preparing you, preparing me. Even when we fail and fall, he prepares us to learn to stand up and keep moving. The second thing about valleys. Valleys are first unavoidable. Secondly, valleys are unpredictable. Valleys are unpredictable. You can't plan them. You can't time them and schedule them. Valleys are always unexpected. They usually come at the worst time. You know, ha have you ever had a flat tire at a good time? No, they just happen. Valleys come suddenly. They are unpredictable. Have you noticed how easily a good day can suddenly become a bad day? It's just one phone call or a text or an email or a routine doctor's checkup or a freak accident. You see, valleys just happen. The prophet Jeremiah he knew what these unpredictable storms were like. So he says in Jeremiah 4.20, Jeremiah 4.20. Waves of destruction roll over the land until it lies in complete desolation. Suddenly my tents are destroyed. In a moment my shelters are crushed. Yes, my friend, valleys are unpredictable. The next one, C, about valleys. Valleys are unbiased. Valleys are unbiased. You see, no one is immune to these things. You see, nobody is immune to a valley. No one is insulated from pain and sorrow. No one gets to slide through life problem free. Everybody has problems, good people and bad people, everybody. You know, problems, trials, difficulties, disturbances, uh, 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 down times, depression, you know, all these things when they come into your life, it does not mean that you're a bad person. No, That's, it doesn't mean that. It means that you're a person, right? It means you're a person. It doesn't mean you're an evil human being. It means you are a human being. Valleys are impartial and unbiased. They don't care how good or bad you are. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said this in Matthew 5, 45. Matthew 5, 45. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. When we go through a difficult time in life, the first reaction is, oh, why me? Oh, why me? Right? Yet, really, I want to tell you, what we should be asking is, why not me? Why not me? Should you and me be the only ones in the universe that never have a tragedy or, or who, who have never lost a loved one? No, my friend, valleys are unbiased. They come to everyone. Let's look at D, the fourth thing about valleys. Valleys are not unending. Valleys are not unending. The good news is that valleys have an expiry date on them. Amen. Right? They have come only for a short time. Psalm 23, 4 again. Let's look at that first part. Even when I walk through the darkest valley. The valley is not something that stays your whole life. It's a circumstance, a situation that has a season to it. They don't come to stay. They come to pass. I remember uh, Pastor Jacob's wife. Sister Anna Greta once told a story of a man who was going through major trouble and was asking God for a word during these troubled times. And, you know, he didn't know what to do, how to pray. So he took his Bible and he turned to a page randomly and he put his finger and he said, Lord, when I put my finger, you better have an answer for me. So he turned, turned the Bible and he took his finger and put it and you know what it said? 
it said, you know how in the Bible it says, and it came to pass in such and such a time this happened, right? So when he put his finger, it came on and it came to pass. You know how he took it? He closed the Bible and he said, thank God, this valley, this problem came to pass and not to stay, right? And he was happy. Look at 1 Peter 1.6, 1 Peter 1.6. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. What is Peter saying here? Peter is saying, he says, for a little while. It's temporary. The pain, the sorrow, it's temporary. Because he's then talking about the wonderful joy ahead. What is he saying? This is temporary, but then comes heaven. Oh, there are no problems in heaven, no valleys, no dark days. I want you to know, my friend, uh, I love that hymn that says, There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day! glorious day that will be. You see, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, that's where you're going. Even if you live 80 or 90 years, and let's say you, you live even 100 years on this earth and you have problems your entire life, that is so insignificant compared to the millions of, and millions of, of years that you will be in eternity problem-free. You see, that's what this is all about. So remember, your valleys are not unending. They do end. They have an expiry date. Let's look at the second main point. Second main point is, let's, let's talk about the purpose of valleys. The purpose of valleys. You see, there is nothing that God allows in our life once we really come to Him uh, that has no purpose. God has a reason for taking you through the valleys. Whether it's doubt or depression or despair, maybe discouragement, maybe even defeat. He's got a reason behind it, right? Uh, let's look at a few things about the purpose. One of the uh, things is, A, write this down. Every valley builds faith. Every valley builds faith. Let's read 1 Peter 1.7. 1 Peter 1.7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. The valleys are not accidental. You see, God wants to build your faith in the valleys of life. We love to enjoy the mountaintops, but you don't build faith on the mountaintops. You build faith in the valleys of life. When you come face to face with a dark valley, you, what happens? Oh, you get on your knees. You cry out to God. My friend, faith is strengthened in the valleys. The next uh, uh, benefit you have in the valley or the purpose is every valley builds character. Every valley builds character. Now, God wants to build your character. He is far more interested in your character than he is in your comfort or your, even your convenience. I'll say it again. God is far more interested in your character than in your comfort. You see, He is more interested in your holiness than in your happiness. I want to say that also again. God is far more interested in your holiness than He is interested in your happiness. Holiness lasts. Happiness doesn't. Happiness comes from holiness anyway. He wants you to develop the character of Jesus Christ. If God is going to make you like Christ, He is going to take you through the circumstances of life He took Christ through. You know, I, I, I have many um, examples of tea bags, right? I, and, and you know, tea bags are great. You know, they come in that little string and that thing, but I don't like tea bags. Please, if I come to your house, I want brewed tea. Okay, we have, we have salon tea. But if you take a tea bag, it's dehydrated, right? You try to smell it, you'll get no smell. It just dry, it just looks uh, a piece of, you know, like a white paper with a string, right? A tea bag is actually absolutely useless 
unless it goes through hot water, right? It's useless. But when it goes through hot water, you get the aroma and you can taste the, the, the tea in it, right? So suffering and, 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 and valleys and problems come our way. And in that time, our faith is built and then our character is built. Let, let me ask you a, a couple of questions, okay? Was Jesus exempted from suffering? Absolutely not. Let me ask you another question. Did Jesus go through times of loneliness and temptation, discouragement, misunderstanding, criticism, and uh, uh, um, did, didn't he have to face injustice? Yes, he did, right? Now my question to you is, will you have to do that? Will you have to go through all those? Absolutely. What makes you think you're any different? You're going to go through valleys. God wants to build character in your life. God is more interested in your character than in your comfort. So through all these things, that's how I always, I love that verse in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good because God takes even those uh, good, bad and ugly things in my life and he makes it good. Let's look at the third main point. The remedy for valleys. The remedy for valleys. Psalm 23, 4, again, the second part, David said, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. So here are some of the remedies, right, that we need in our life when valleys come our way. A, Refuse to be discouraged. Refuse to be discouraged. Right, let's look at it again. Psalm 23, 4, first part. Even when I walk through the darkest valley. It says, when I walk, I walk. It doesn't say, oh, when I panic and run through the valley. No, when I walk through the valley, not panic and run through. You see, to walk means calmly deliberately take steps through the valley, right? What does David say? Then he says, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. He refused to be discouraged. That's what he's saying, refuse to be discouraged. You can't go around the valley. You can't go under the valley. You can't go over the valley. You have to go through the valley. Here he says, I will not be afraid. Will. What is that will? I will. Will implies a choice. It implies the making of a decision. I will not be afraid. You know, if you are discouraged today, I don't have to know your problems. But I'll tell you, it's because you're choosing to be discouraged. Yes. You are choosing to be discouraged. Discouragement is always a choice. Stop choosing to think discouraging thoughts and looking at all the negatives, all the things that are going to go wrong. You see, it's a choice. You're choosing not to look at Christ and all the positive things. You know, you can choose if you're going the wrong way and you're down, you can choose to change today. God wants you to choose. It's a deliberate act. How do I choose not to be discouraged? How do I choose not to be discouraged? Listen to me very carefully. It's by focusing on God's power rather than on your problems. I want to say that again. It's by focusing on God's power and the wealth of everything that God has rather than on your problem. Our biggest thing is we always focus on the problem. Like I said, the hand is uh, right here. It's not so big. Oh, the problem gets so big. We bring it in front of eyes and now we can't see anything else. Oh, this is it. This is it. This is it. Can't sleep. Can't think. Right? No. Don't focus on the problem. You focus on the Lord. How do you do it? You can take, for example, right, two people and you put them in the identical situation. Their situations, both of them are going through a chaos, tragedy, crisis, you know, and they, 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 they're walking the same path. And one of them is completely blown away by all of it. The other one is actually flying high and happy. You see, one of them falls apart and one of them is strengthened 
by all the valleys and the struggles. The difference is what you're focusing on. You need to focus not on your circumstances, but you need to focus on Christ. Not on the situation, but on the Savior. Not on the problem, but on God's power. Look at Colossians 1.11. Colossians 1.11. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all His glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy. My friend, human energy runs out. In the valley of life or in the valleys of life, you need a power source bigger than yourself. So remember that, right? You must refuse, you must make the choice and refuse to be discouraged. The second thing is, remember God is close to you. Remember God is close to you. Psalm 23, 4, again, the first part. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. For you are close beside me. God not only promises us his power in the valley, he promises his presence. You see, you will never go through a valley by yourself. I, uh, did you hear me? You will never go through a valley by yourself. Look at Isaiah 43 2. Isaiah 43 2. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. You're not going to drown, my friend. You are not going to burn up and drown and die. No, God says, I am with you. You know, uh, Psalm 23, 4, um, as you read it, you know, there is a strategic change uh, in the language, right? When the psalm starts and as the psalm progresses, Psalm 23. In the first part of the psalm, David talks in the third person, right? Because he's talking about God, right? Um, so he says things like, he leads me beside still waters. He guides me into green pastures. He restores my soul. Okay? But when he gets into the valley situation, right? The language used is changed. It changed to the second person. He starts uh, uh, talking not about God anymore, but he's talking to God. When he's in the valley, he's saying, uh, you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You see, it's the valleys of life that bring us face to face with God. All of a sudden, the ultimate becomes the intimate. And when I'm going through the valley, I don't want to talk about God. I want to talk to God. You see, that's when religion becomes a relationship. Yes, my friend. So we need to remember that God, His presence is close to us. And it's not some religion or a bunch of rules. It is a relationship where His presence is. And then the final thing I want to leave with you is <clears throat> C. Rely on God's protection and guidance. Rely on God's protection and guidance. Okay, one last time, let's look at Psalm 23, 4. Listen carefully. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. David reminds himself that God's rod and staff comforts him. The rod and staff were the two basic tools that a shepherd used to protect and uh, to guide the sheep. A rod was basically about two feet long, right? You can uh, see the image uh, on the screen, right? About two feet long, and at the end of it was a heavy knot, right? A heavy knot. Now, shepherds were very skilled at hurling the rod. It's like a missile at anything that would attack the sheep. That's how the shepherd protected the sheep. God is saying, when you go through the valley, I am defending you. I am protecting you. The rod of God will protect you. Even when you're fighting in your life and you're going through depression and you're trying to get over it, remember you're not alone because God is fighting for you. 
God is fighting with you. He is fighting off spiritual forces. He defends and protects you with his rod. Now, on the other side, the staff, right? Look at the screen again. Look at the picture. Staff was a long stick with a crock or a hook at the end of it. The shepherd uses a staff to guide and comfort. He will use the staff to draw the sheep close to him. He will use the staff to lift them up when they are down. When you go through the valley, you're not going through it alone. God is going with you and he's using his rod and his staff to protect and guide you. You know, many followers of Christ go through valleys just like many people who don't follow Christ. Many believers and unbelievers go through the same thing, right? They go through disappointment. They get sick. They experience tragedies. They lose loved ones. They have financial problems. Um, they have family problems. They face depression, right? Whether you're a believer or unbeliever. But the difference is that the follower of Christ is never, never, never alone as he goes through the darkest valley because the shepherd, the shepherd is always with him. The Lord is my shepherd. And you know what? He demolishes my depression. He demolishes my depression. I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes. Please don't uh, uh, look around, be quiet for a moment. You know, maybe you're going through some tough situations, some valleys. Maybe some of you can't even talk about. Maybe some of these have come a long time. Maybe some of this has been because you've been tolerating it. I want to tell you today, the dark valley you're going through, the depression, the binding, God wants you to let it go, the discouragement. God wants you to make a choice. God wants you to let the dark valley be released from your life, the loneliness to be taken out. Because he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you until the end. There are 7,000 promises in the word of God given to you. And he says, doesn't matter what you go through, I am there for you. I will see you through. I am there. I am your God. I want you to take your left hand, put it on your heart. Raise your right hand to heaven. Keep your heads bowed, eyes closed and pray with me. Pray with me where you are. Say, Lord, I'm coming to you right now. I need you in my life. Some of you need to say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Because, Lord, I have sinned. I have failed. I have fallen. Today I repent. I will not go that path. I will turn around. Cleanse me with your blood. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my heart. Lord, I open my heart to you. I invite you. Lord, come and live in me. Be the ruler of my life. Lord, I know when the Lord is my shepherd, the shepherd is my Lord. Be the Lord of my life. Father, right now I pray for each one who has this dark cloud and this valley of darkness and depression and going through in Jesus' name right now. I pray for the release of your Holy Spirit, the power of God, Lord, that they will not focus on the problem. They will focus on you. You're the one who has never lied. And you said, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Lord, give them rest right now. Lord, I, I pray that they will give their burden to you. Now everybody, give that burden to God. Give that relationship to God. Give that broken heartedness to God. Give those tears to God. Right now, right now, right now. Father, in Jesus' name, release my brother, release my sister, and set them free right now. Lord, I know no matter what we go through, you are God and you will always come through for us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I believe God spoke to you through his word. We're going to close this service, not, not before. We have a few things to do. Number one, we want you to join us on Tuesdays for our Bible study about fear with Dr. Jerry Davis. And also, uh, that is at 7 o'clock on Zoom, and I believe by now the church would have sent you the link for next Tuesday.
We started it last week, but this this will be the second week of a three-part series. If you did not join us last week, you can feel free to ask uh, the link for that so that you can listen to it and join this week's Tuesday's study on facing your fears. Also, I want to, um, at this moment, encourage you to, wherever you are, if you have a need, I want you to join me as we pray for God to break those bondages, to break the yoke, to heal you, to set you free. And also we're going to close in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for being with us. Father, I pray for those who are listening to your word, those who are gathered here today, Father. I pray that you would bless them. I pray, Lord, if they, if they are sick, or if they have been given, Lord, uh, Lord, the notice by the doctors that something is not right. I pray, O oh Lord, that you change that diagnosis. That, Lord, you would heal them. And, Father, set them free. If they're going through family issues, I pray that the peace which passeth all human understanding will prevail in those homes and families. And they will be able to resolve all differences. I also pray, Lord, for those who are unemployed, that you would provide ways and means and avenues of where they could secure employment, Father. I pray that you would meet financial needs. I pray for those who are in debt. Father, I pray for unexpected monies to come so that they will be able, Lord, to pay up those debts and live free, Father. We pray your favor. We pray your face will shine upon your children this week as they step into a new month. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you, be with you as you continue your journey with the Lord. Please don't forget to join us on Tuesday Facing the Fears, and on Sunday next week, Peace in the Pandemic, Sermon number 6. Looking forward to see you. May the Lord bless you and be with you as you step into this new month. May God's peace rest and abide with you. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. 
He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever.